Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask a question, which I'll flip in here. Uh, he's basically saying, hey, what do you think about that there are some YouTubers out there who are promoting a bunch of prepackaged microwave meals? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, what's your thoughts on that in general? So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Uh, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about that. All right, guys. Uh, the fact that it's YouTubers promoting it, I don't necessarily have thoughts on that. Uh, there's a couple different ways we could go with this entire topic. Uh, several different ways that we could go. Uh, first of all, yeah, obviously I'm going to promote mostly whole foods. Uh, minimally processed foods. Anyone who is an advocate of fitness is going to promote that. I don't care what your, your overall message is. That should generally be the idea. <laughs> I mean, heavily processed foods, eating a bunch of garbage, things like that, is not ideal for fitness uh, or health in the long term. Anyways, not saying some people can't do that and still be healthy. Uh, but it's not a good idea. There are also people who can smoke cigarettes their whole life and never get cancer. You know, those are lucky people. They just have certain genetic resistances to things. Uh, you know, there are people who can be alcoholics whose livers stay intact. That's the real world. Uh, but as far as a lot of this goes, prepackaged meals, um, I don't necessarily see a problem with that because there's a couple different directions you could go even with that. Uh, is it a problem? No. If, are they promoting mostly whole foods? I mean, what ingredients are in these things? Because I haven't seen any of these. I was unaware of their YouTubers promoting this. But if you have a company who is making healthy meals for people who don't necessarily have the time to always cook, uh, and, and I've said before, most people do have time to cook. People can make the time to cook. Uh, and it's not even about laziness. Sometimes it's, it's an issue of some people make so much money with their time that they can't be bothered uh, with this now maybe they can't obviously can't afford a full-time cook but there are plenty of upper upper middle class people who are very fitness oriented there are people with six-figure incomes um, I've met several people who are fitness enthusiasts who are well into six figures two hundred three hundred thousand dollars a year I've known several um, I've even seen you know known people at my gyms who are like that who are very very serious about their training you know who make three hundred plus thousand dollars uh, for someone like that Maybe they don't want to take the time to cook all these healthy meals. Maybe they don't want to take the time to cook brown rice and chicken. They don't want to waste five, ten minutes of their day messing with stuff or cooking or anything else. They have money. Uh, they don't have time. So in that case, that's providing a service. That is providing a service. Uh, sure, some of these things might have a lot of sodium for these microwavable ones, but again, look at sodium from the perspective of... Uh, some people suffer high blood pressure. Some people suffer edemia. Some people suffer water retention from large amounts of sodium. Some people don't. It seems to be genetic, but also lifestyle effects. But there are a lot of people who train hard, uh, do plenty of cardio, who large amounts of sodium intake has no negative effect on their body. It doesn't affect their blood pressure negatively. It doesn't cause them to bloat. Uh, so in that case, if there's someone is like that, uh, this isn't a problem. It's not a health problem to have a bunch of sodium in there. So it becomes a question of what's being put into these meals. Uh, is it a bunch of garbage or are they actually <clears throat> cooking stuff like chicken? They're cooking lean steak, uh, putting brown rice, potatoes or sweet potatoes, vegetables, stuff like that in there. Uh, it's perfectly acceptable. We're talking about whole foods. So what? They've been cooked and frozen. Freezing and then reheating food even in a microwave, not the most ideal uh, form of cooking, but you know what? you don't lose that many nutrients from doing that. Yeah, you can lose a little bit of nutrition doing that, but it's not a lot. And I mean, I think it's fair to say that someone eating something like that from Whole Foods is still going to be uh, dramatically better off than someone who's going and buying some of these garbage-laden, uh, highly processed uh, microwave meals that are out there. I mean, we know the type, and they vary in their content. And even some of the healthier ones that are marketed as healthy, you know, they're okay, but there's still a lot of processing involved. Uh, if someone is doing this as a legitimate food service with Whole Foods, yeah, that's okay. In fact, someone I know had approached me about doing something like that. They kind of put it on the side burner because they wanted to make some money on another endeavor. Uh, but someone had approached me a while back about doing that exact sort of thing. Uh, of Again, all these uh, like free-range meat and everything, they were going to do all of that. And even some of their own products that they raised at their own home. Uh, they were going to go into one of these businesses of doing prepackaged meals. And I thought that was interesting because they were going to ship them everywhere. Uh, and they had asked us, if they do this, would I be okay with promoting it? And yeah, I told them I would, uh, but it never really took off off the ground. Uh, so I think that person put it on the back burner. 
Um, because yeah, I, I kind of knew what they were going to be putting in it for ingredients and things, and I was okay with that. Because there's a big difference between pushing a bunch of supplements, a bunch of pills and powders versus pushing actual food, pushing actual food. Uh, and even I've known other people who've done this before. Uh, I knew people up in the UK who I power lifted with. Uh, big people up in my powerlifting federation who run a whole company that does this. Uh, and it appears to be pretty good. I mean, obviously it's harder to get certain things in the UK. A lot of, a lot of the better meats and things, it is harder to get in their country, so they cost more. Um, so I, I look like, you know, they're obviously struggling and making pricing competitive. But that's what a lot of this comes down to, to. This is a real convenience factor. You know, people talk about convenience factors with protein shakes. They eat all these highly refined whey and everything else. Uh, but you compare that convenience factor of that versus someone who's, you're basically paying for someone to prepackage uh, clean meals, clean foods. Now, that's a whole nother topic, of course, and all people always argue, oh, how do you define clean? How do you define clean? You can't define that term. Guys, don't be stupid. There's enough stupidity on the internet. Just because something doesn't have a clearly defined meaning doesn't mean that most of us can't figure out the general meaning of what's being suggested. Uh, <laughs> so there's enough stupidity on the internet. We don't need to further that. I think most of us understand the general concept behind eating clean. And again, I'll use the quotations. It is a, it's a slang term, essentially. And so, yeah, as a slang term, it may not have a clearly defined scientific meaning, but most of us get the idea, guys. Clean foods are going to be foods that generally fit within your diet, uh, whole foods that are minimally processed. We don't need to overcomplicate that. It's much easier to say clean than to spout out that whole line that I just gave, right? And, uh, but that's always a point of contention out here in this community. People always want to argue about that. And it's strange that it's always the flexible dieters and if it fits your macros guys who love to argue that term that you can't clearly define that while they promote people eating Pop-Tarts. Uh, that's, that's not fitness, guys. You guys are talking about body composition at this point. If you eat your exact amount of macros, it doesn't matter what, what the, where they come from. It's All that <clears throat> matters is the calories and basic macros that determine body composition. Uh, you're right, but body composition and fitness are not the same thing. They're not the same thing. No, it isn't necessary to eat clean in order to lose body fat and retain muscle. But you're going to feel a lot better. You're probably going to live longer. You're going to be healthier. In the long term, you're probably going to perform better athletically. And in the long term, that still might affect your body composition because your mood, your energy, your appetite, your athletic performance will affect body composition in the long term. Uh, and hopefully most people can understand that. That will affect your energy in, energy out equation. Uh, so that's not in question. But as far as people promoting prepackaged meals for people who can afford them. Now, if they're saying you have to have these, oh, you have to have this, uh, it's better than when you're buying at the store yourself. Okay, they're conning you. They're full of shit. But if they're promoting it as uh, a more expensive alternative, basically you're paying someone else to cook these meals for you so that you can uh, prepare them because maybe you have more money than you have free time. And there are a lot of business-oriented people out there like that. There are people who have more money than they have free time. And for those people, a product like that's fantastic. Now, obviously, on the other end, you have people who only work a 40-hour work week or who go to school and don't work. Uh, those people generally have more time than they do money unless they have a really, really busy family life or other obligations outside of their career or school. Uh, totally different scenario. Obviously, for those people, they're not your market for something like that. And that's okay. They don't need to be. As long as you're not telling them, oh, they need to find a way to come up with the money, then what's the problem? Uh, nothing wrong with prepackaged microwavable chicken breast, brown rice, and broccoli. Other than it might get bland eventually. Uh, but, you know, I would assume they're putting uh, an assortment of sauces. That would be where a company would market that stuff well. You know, they, they give different sauces and flavors to go on the brown rice to kind of spice it back up a little bit. Um, so, yeah, this, this whole idea is perfectly fine. Uh, as long as these people are promoting the convenience of having someone else uh, freeze uh, clean whole food meals, there's no problem. And I would say that's a hell of a lot better than them promoting protein shakes for convenience, uh, meal replacement drinks for convenience. I mean, this is a hundred times better. 
uh, we're not even in the same ballpark and it's also would be way better than them promoting you going and buying the regular junk at the supermarket as far as prepackaged uh, frozen stuff goes uh, so in the grand scheme of things I don't have a problem with this and I can see why some people are like oh they're promoting prepackaged meals with sodium and stuff in it but again that doesn't automatically make it uh, a problem uh, someone could use some of these companies that have stuff like this, a variety of these, these packages of different things to eat a totally balanced, healthy diet and do it. It's just, it's going to be expensive. Uh, so it's just a matter of who their market is. And if you're marketing to people who have more money than they do free time, there's no problem here because at the end of the day, they're still eating the same stuff. Though, I mean, does it really matter if you cook your own asparagus or if someone else did and then you reheated it? Probably not. Uh, and uh, again, I think some people overstate uh, that freezing foods and then reconstituting them in a microwave is, is unhealthy. It's actually not. There are foods, particularly vegetables, uh, believe it or not, that will actually retain more of their nutrition. It's going to be food by food. You're going to actually have to research that food by individual food. But there are foods, quite a few of them out there, that actually retain more nutritional content if you freeze them and then uh, microwave them than if you had just let them sit out several extra days before you cook them. There's a lot of vegetables like that. Uh, in fact, that's very common. Uh, so don't let that deter you from something like that. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.